YouTube, what is good today? We are talking about high quality photos on Instagram. So last month I posted this video all about Instagram, why you're not gaining followers, giving a real explanation of Instagram in 2018. And a lot of you really enjoyed the video, so shout out to you, I'm glad you liked it so much. But I did get a lot of DMs and a lot of messages from people asking, how come my photos don't look as high quality as yours? It seems like your photos on your Instagram are high resolution and mine are just kind of grainy, they're just not as clean, I'm doing something wrong. So that is what we are talking about today. I'm gonna break down some things that you can remember, some things you can avoid, some tips on how to take your Instagram photos to that clean, high quality level that we're all looking for. So first and foremost, it's important to understand what happens when you post a photo to Instagram. If your image is sized anywhere over 180 pixels in width, it gets downsized to, you guessed it, 180 pixels in width. The reason they do this, it looks good on most computers and most smartphones. It keeps a high resolution look, but I'm sure it optimizes Instagram and Facebook's storage. Think about how many photos get posted to their platforms every single day. They have to store them somewhere, so they downsize the photos to maximize their storage and also keep a pretty high resolution look. Look. But this is what's important to remember. Every single photo is downsized and compressed. And when a photo is compressed, it does lose some quality, regardless of if it was taken on an iPhone or a $20,000 DSLR camera. So everything we talk about in today's video is gonna ensure two things. One, we're gonna make sure you have the highest quality image possible before you post it to Instagram. And two, we're gonna make sure we minimize the effect that compression has on your image quality once you post your photo to Instagram and they downsize it to that 1000 by 80 pixel width. So let's get into these tips. So here we go. The first thing that could be destroying your image quality on Instagram is not exporting your photo at quality level 100. Now this typically affects people who use Lightroom and Photoshop and computer programs, but it can affect mobile photography editors as well. If you're using apps, make sure that you are exporting at quality level 100. And if you're using Lightroom, Photoshop, any of these programs on the computer, it's key to make sure you're exporting your file at the highest quality level to ensure that when it's posted to Instagram, you're getting the highest quality possible. So say you're using Lightroom. When you go to export a photo, you wanna make sure that on that export screen, down in the quality section, it is set to 100, not 95, not 90, not 80. Level 100 to assure maximum quality. Now the second thing I wanna talk about is understanding how cropping your photo can affect your image quality. Now let's use this frame as an example. Let's pretend this brown area right here, that is your Instagram post. That is that 1080 pixel width that Instagram compresses your photo down to. And this right here is the photo that you will be posting. Notice how this image is much larger than that brown square. So if you were to post this photo, it's gonna compress into that brown area. Like I said, that does lose some image quality, but at least you got some real estate to work with. The photo is just being shrunk down. And remember, like I said earlier, this size right here, this 1080 pixel size is what most people see on their computer and on their smartphone. So let's say hypothetically, you crop very far in on an image and now your photo is this size right here. It does not take up the full space of your Instagram post. It doesn't take up that entire 1080 pixels. What happens? Well, when someone looks at your photo, it has to be stretched out to fill that area. Photo stretching or expansion can be very bad for image quality because you don't have the real estate to work with. Remember, like I said, that larger photo, it is just being shrunk down. It's going to a smaller size, but it's much worse to have a photo that's been overcropped and is now expanding to a large size to fill the space on Instagram. So remember, if you crop too far in on your face or too far in on a photo, it could substantially affect the image quality because the photo has to be stretched out to be seen in its full size on Instagram. Now tip number three is understanding ISO. Now ISO is a function of your camera that has a lot to do with how clean your image is. It can determine if there's a lot of grain or no grain at all. Now I'm gonna keep this pretty simple, but essentially shooting at a high ISO introduces a lot of noise and a lot of grain into your photo and shooting at a low ISO keeps that noise and grain out of your image. How many times have you been out with your iPhone and it's nighttime and you go to take a photo and you're like, wow, this does not look good at all. That's because your iPhone camera had to raise its ISO to very high levels to make that picture possible and expose it properly. And the same could be said when you take an iPhone photo during the day in good lighting and you say, wow, this is like a professional camera. It's absolutely amazing. ISO plays a big part in how that image quality looks. So if you're using a DSLR camera or just your iPhone, no matter what it is, make sure that you are using the lowest ISO possible. If you're using a DSLR and it's daytime, try to get your ISO down to 100, 200, 300, maybe even 400 to ensure there's not a lot of noise in your image. 
And the same can be said for people who shoot on your iPhone. Just try to make sure that your photo is lit as well as possible so the automatic settings on your phone keep your ISO low. It doesn't really matter if you're shooting in manual mode or not, it's just important to understand that the lower your ISO can get, whether you set it there manually or your camera or your phone automatically does it, the better it's gonna be for your image quality. So more light, lower ISO, better photo. I had to hit a quick location switch. We are down in the office now. The fourth thing we're talking about is understanding how certain editing techniques can affect the quality of your image. Like I've said a bunch in this video, when you post a photo, it will get compressed and the quality will go down. So it's important to keep that in mind and make sure you minimize the quality loss that you have before posting a photo. And certain editing techniques can substantially decrease the quality of your image if you're not careful with them. Things like bringing up your exposure. Bringing up your exposure introduces artificial light into your photo, which introduces noise and grain. Bringing up your shadows does the same thing in the shadows. You get noise and you get grain to your image. Things like the clarity slider and the sharpness slider in Lightroom, they're great. They can add a lot of punch into your image, but if they're overdone, they can add a lot of noise and a lot of grain and artifacts into your photo, making the image less clear. The same can be said for certain tools in Instagram. Things like the structure slider are very cool. Cool. They add like this contrasty feel to your photo, but if you overdo it, it can affect the quality of your image. So be strategic. If you're editing a photo that you know you will be posting to Instagram, maybe only go 50% on those certain editing techniques. Maybe if you bring your exposure normally to plus five, maybe only go to plus 2.5. And if you take your clarity to level 70, maybe only take it to level 35 because you want to limit the amount of damage that you're doing to your photo and editing because you know that compression factor is coming when you post it to Instagram. It's all about being strategic and remembering that the way your photo looks when you edit it on your computer may not be how it looks on Instagram once it's sized down and compressed during the posting process. Tip number five is all about transferring files from your computer to your phone. Let's say you take a photo with your DSLR, you edit it on your computer and you need to get it to your phone. Me personally, because I am an Apple product user, I like to use AirDrop. It's a good feature to get the photos from one place to another and ensure the quality is good. And there's a lot of other services that allow you to do this, things like Dropbox, Google Drive, whatever you wanna use. But it's very important to remember that using certain transfer methods like email could potentially lead to a loss of quality on your photo. This happens all the time when I'm working with clients. I send them a photo and then like a week goes by and they're like, hey, something looks weird with this photo, what's going on? And I ask them, did you email this to someone else? Did you email this to yourself? And they usually say yes. And when they sent that photo via email, they chose a smaller size compressing the photo. And then when they posted it to Instagram, it compressed it farther and it lost a lot of its quality. Now this is something that most people don't have to worry about, but I wanted to include it on this list if you're ever emailing photos. And especially if you're working with clients, it's important to educate them on how you can lose image quality if you're not careful about how you're transferring your files. So pay attention to however it is that you're getting a file from your computer to your phone and make sure you're transferring it in its full 100% quality size. You're not downsizing it in any way. So there we go. Those are my Instagram tips for how to get a higher resolution, higher quality photo on the platform. If you guys want to check out my Instagram at Evan Ramp, you can. That is where I learned all this stuff through trial and error. Now, one other thing that you can consider doing is shooting in a RAW format as opposed to a JPEG format. Now, this can be kind of a pain if you are an iPhone user, but if you are using a DSLR or a point and shoot or any type of real camera, I highly recommend using a RAW file over a JPEG to ensure that while you're editing the photo, you get the highest quality image possible because typically RAW files, you can do a little bit more in editing. Now, this is a topic that we could do like a 10 minute video on, so I'm not gonna get into it, but all you gotta know is Raw files can do a little bit more for editing without damaging the quality of your image. So if you want me to really explain that, you gotta let me know in the comments. But that's it for today's video. Just like the last Instagram video that I made, I wanted this one to be more real and give real advice, not just the same old crap about, oh, make sure you size your image properly. That's not how it works. Everyone's photo is the same size on Instagram. They clearly say it on their website. Everyone's photo is posted at the same size. It's all about what you were doing when you were capturing the photo and what you were doing when you were editing the photo to ensure that it has the highest, cleanest looking quality you can possibly achieve. So I hope these tips helped you out. I hope you can take them, apply them to your photography and get some super crispy photos on your Instagram going forward. If you enjoyed it, do me a solid, hit that thumbs up and make sure you subscribe for more photography videos. Thank you guys so much for watching. It means the world to me. 
The support on the channel is amazing. Thank you guys. I'll see you next time.